Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog Presents, and this is the last episode of Carnage Week. Uh, I know this is late, I really am sorry for that, but we had, you know, a lot of stuff last week. Right at the end of the week, we hit, we you know, got hit with the trailer, and then I did the breakdown video, and then we did like the reaction to the internet video, and all of that, and that really threw off my schedule. And then I reached out to the artist of the story we're going to talk about today, and he said, hey, if you give me a couple days, I'll answer your questions. Um, you know, I'm really busy right now, but I'll get to your questions very soon, and then you can add that to the end of your video, which I was like awesome I'll give it a few more days uh, and I waited as long as I could but unfortunately you know I know he's very busy so that's fine I, if he answers my questions I'll make a separate video later on about uh, you know what is you know his answers to my questions are so we'll get into that in another episode if he you know has time to answer me but I know he's very busy so I didn't want to like pester him or anything like that um, I did want to make this video for you guys though because this is the episode I wanted to end on with Carnage Week so I'm, I'm sorry we're like a week late with it but here we are at least uh, in episode 81 here and we're finally getting to it and uh, and then this story this is another one from Carnage Classic like that graphic novel alone I think gave us like eight or nine Carnage stories and we didn't even go through all of them I think we only did like you know three-fourths of that graphic novel this week talking about the issues and the comics that are in there this one I found very interesting though these are two issues of Amazing Spider-Man and I thought this would be a great note to end on for this week although we will have plenty more Carnage stuff coming up I promise you I know I originally planned to go through Carnage USA and Carnage Family Feud and then the Jerry Conway current stuff um, I knew I you know I know I said I was gonna get through all that stuff but I figured if I if I crammed it all too close in in one week it just wouldn't give Carnage the proper respect, and we wouldn't be able to we wouldn't be able to dissect, I guess, these storylines uh, as well as we could if we just you know spread them out a little bit more. So I am gonna just go in chronological order the best I can from here on out, and we're gonna tell Venom stories and talk about those comics, and then we'll come back to Carnage, and we'll just go back and forth between the two characters. Uh, but today. In the Carnage Classic trade, so remember, go pick that up if you just want good Carnage stories. If you only can afford one book, pick up Carnage Classics because you get your, your origin story in there. You get the uh, Spider Carnage uh, story, which we didn't talk about yet, but we will when we get to you know the Ben Riley stuff. Um, we, there's a lot of things in this book that we just have not covered, uh, but there's a lot of things we have. You get a lot. You get the Mind Bomb. It's a Wonderful Life. And my interview with David Quinn is still going to happen. We're going to record it probably next Saturday. So hopefully in the next two weeks, I will have an actual interview uh, for you guys for Carnage. You know, David Quinn wrote the It's a Wonderful Life Carnage story, and, uh, and he was nice enough to take time out of his day to let me interview him. So we'll have that interview coming up. And as soon as Joe Bennett reaches back to me and gives me those uh you know, answers my questions. I'll do a video for that. And whenever and the Senti has time to answer the questions for Venom the Madness, um, I will give you guys that video as well. So a lot of interviews coming up. I'm trying to get more and more. Um, and as we're close, you know, to a thousand subscribers now, I'm like getting really excited trying to do more work for you guys. So thank you again for the support. Uh, so today we're just going to talk about two issues. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man issue 430 and 431. And if you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm looking at my Kindle. Um, I have the issues right here. And this was written by Tom DeFalco, and it was drawn by Joe Bennett, like I said, who I reached out to recently. And these are just a two-part storyline where Carnage comes into contact with the Silver Surfer. And uh, the reason why I wanted to tackle this is because something happens in this book and these two issues that I did not know happened. I read these when I was a kid, but some of this probably just didn't register or I just didn't remember it for obvious reasons. Uh, but, uh, you know, because this was like 50, 50, 20 years ago, I think, about now. Like, yeah, about 20 years ago, uh, 1997, 1998. So, um, wow, that's a long time. Uh, so anyway, in this storyline, it starts off, and uh, during this time in the comics, uh, there was this storyline called Onslaught with the X-Men. And Onslaught was, uh, I don't want to spoil that storyline for you, but he was this big powerful enemy that beat the X-Men up and uh, seemingly killed all the superheroes. Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, uh, and the Avengers. Like all, like all of that group, the Fantastic Four as well, all of them got sent away to like a different pocket dimension for like a whole year and disappeared. Uh, and it was in a storyline called Heroes Reborn. So then in Heroes Return, this is when this is set. Uh, Captain America, Iron Man, the Fantastic Four, all those characters are now back in the Marvel Universe. And Spider-Man is now relieved because with all of them gone and all of them were protectors of New York, like it was pretty much New York was left to Spider-Man and Daredevil and characters like that, like all the street level characters. Uh, and then a new team called the Thunderbolts came in, who uh, I don't want to spoil that storyline for you, but definitely check out Thunderbolts classics. That's good stuff too. Uh, the Thunderbolts came in and they were kind of protectors and they moved into Freedom Tower or whatever it was called. Like there was a, not Fantastic Four's, you know, Baxter building, but there was like another building built uh, that the Fantastic Four were operating out of. 
and the Thunderbolts moved into there and like renamed it and all that stuff. Uh, so they were kind of in there. Spider Man swinging around New York at the beginning of the story. He's like, hey, I'm going to go find Human Torch, you know, my friend, and I want to like connect with him again and, and make jokes with him and give him a, you know, a webbing wedgie or something, you know, like he's, you know, being childish. But he's like, yeah, I just want to go see my friend. A lot has happened over this, you know, past year. My life's been crazy. Uh, I'm wanted right now. Peter Parker at this point, Norman Osborne has bought the Daily Bugle and is uh, kind of has J. Jonah Jameson in his back pocket, and he has some dirt on J. Jonah Jameson, and he kind of promised something to J. Jonah Jameson. So J.J. has, you know, kind of given up some of his morals and uh, and is now running the paper in a different way. And now there's a, a bounty out for Spider-Man. So currently in this run, we have Mary Jane once again, you know, like we uh, that happened a lot in the 90s, where she's just complaining about Peter being Spider-Man. And now she's cl complaining for good reason. He could be shot by, like, the cops now, and superheroes are even kind of after him, some of them. Um, so... You know, he's not, he doesn't have, you know, easy right now. So he's going around New York and people are screaming at him, we don't like you, and he's trying to help them. Uh, and meanwhile, Ravencroft, uh, Dr. Ash Kafka, you know, who we talked about in previous episodes, she doesn't work there anymore. Funding was cut on a lot of the things there and she was let go. John Jameson, I believe, was let go also. So now they have this new guy coming in and just, you know, with the last of the money that they have for the Ravencroft is like, all right, you know, we still have, we have Carnage back here. We're spending a lot of money keeping this guy like at bay. He probably won't even notice, like we have to cut funding. He probably won't even notice if we have to like turn off the microwave emitters. He's probably not even going to notice. So let's flip those off and see what happens because running those all day 24-7 is like costing this building a lot of money. And the guards are like, hey, new guy, uh, that's going to let the freak out. He's going to kill all of us. And the new guy, you know, the new head of whatever is like coming in. He's like, he's the guy, like the a-hole that most companies hire to go in and cut things like, all right, cut the funding here, cut the funding here, save us some money so we can keep this building operational, uh, you know, because it can't, money just doesn't grow on trees. We can't operate this building if we're going to have to like spend all this money to keep Cletus Cassidy at bay. So he's coming in, cutting things off and he turns off the microwave emitters and instantly carnage is loosed. <laughs> so obviously Tom DeFalco is like, look, I got two issues to tell this story. What stupid thing can I come up with to have for carnage to get out? All right, cool. I'll just make like an a-hole coming in, cutting the funding and that'll get Carnage out. So, of course, Carnage kills a bunch of people and just goes on a tirade, runs around New York, finds a guy who was, like, you know, parked in a handicapped spot, but it's someone Carnage knew, and he's, like, kind of going after specific targets, but also just, like, you know, killing freely like he does. He even goes to the Daily Bugle, where Joe Robbie Robertson, um, you know, a, a friend of Peter Parker's and, uh, you know, from the Spider-Man movies and stuff, from the Sam Raimi ones, um, he, uh, you know, he is questioning Joe Jonah Jameson. He's like, look, I think you've given up your morals ever since Norman Osborn came here, and I'm debating if I even want to work here anymore. And his wife is even like, hey, I don't want you to work there anymore. That man has given up his principles. You're working all these crazy hours. Like, you need to be with your family, and you need to go and do something that makes you happy. So he's kind of at this crisis in his life, too, where he's wondering if he should stay at the newspaper that he helped build with J. Jonah Jameson. And uh, while he's there, his wife's coming to visit, and she's in the elevator with Cletus Cassidy. And he, like, cuts her arm severely and, uh, and then lets her live but when they when the elevator gets to the top floor she's like ready to pass out from blood loss and in her blood it's written on the wall carnage rules uh again so again just carnage sending that message back to spider-man like hey i'm back i'm out and uh you better come you better come deal with me uh but he's not sending it to spider-man obviously he's sending it to the daily bugle because carnage has a thing for jay jonah jameson and all the people there so uh yeah so it starts off on a really scary note and meanwhile up in space there's a satellite that's you know um like a satellite station that is uh, about to get hit with a meteor. Silver Surfer shows up at the right time, saves those people, and he's coming from far space to show up on Earth so that he can also uh, come down and connect with the Fantastic Four now that they're back. So he's like, hey, I had they, they were my friends, and he started at the point this point in the comic started to develop a relationship with Alicia Masters, who is uh, the Things like ex girlfriend. And they started, you know, her and Silver Surfer started to have this, you know, bond and stuff. So he's like, I'm going to go see the Fantastic Four. Now that they're back, I'm going to go see Alicia. Hopefully that's not going to be weird. Uh, the relationship we're building there, hopefully the thing won't, you know, hate me for that. And, you know, it's it's really interesting. The, the Silver Surfer was going through a lot of emotional stuff during this time. He was, you know, becoming like this very, um, you know, Buddha-like figure where he was like very, you know, uh, about everyone's emotions and, and, you know, didn't want to cross any lines with people uh, and also balancing his powers too. 
So he comes down to Earth, and uh, and meanwhile, this is when Spider-Man's fighting Carnage. Now that you know Joe Robbie's wife has been injured, she gets taken to the hospital, and Spider-Man is like, "All right, that's it. I'm going after Carnage," and I'm the gloves are off, and he goes after Carnage hardcore. But every time he's fighting Carnage, there are even like civilians and police officers that are yelling and screaming and throwing and shooting at uh, Spider-Man, and he's starting to question like. He's just had enough at this point. He's like, he's like, you know what? If these people don't want me to save them, I won't. So he's kind of like, screw it. You know, like I, I'll, I'll just catch Carnage because he's a psycho. And then that's it. Like, I, I'm not doing it for them anymore. I'm just going to do it for me. And then I'm going to stop being Spider-Man for a while. Like, I, I got a bounty on my head. I don't need this crap. Um, so just see, see Peter being a little bit selfish, I guess, in a way. Uh, but obviously, every time he does go down that route, bad things happen. And in this case, something de definitely bad happens because the Silver Surfer shows up while Spider-Man is fighting Carnage. And, you know, uh, Cletus Cassidy turns and sees, uh, you know, the Silver Surfer and he's like, okay. And he's like, uh, well, let's do this mother. And then before he can even finish his sentence, the suit starts freaking out. And Car uh, Carnage goes, you know, he's like, Cletus is like, what's going on? What's going on? And Spider-Man's like, what's happening? And the suit is like pulling off of uh, Cletus Cassidy and trying to run away. And it's going into the sewers and trying to run away. And Cletus, you know, because it's bonded with his blood, it's hurting him severely to be separated from the costume. Uh, obviously, you know, we'll learn when we talk about Spider-Carnage later, whenever the symbiote leaves Cletus Cassidy to go bond with someone else, it is a very painful experience for Cletus. And every moment the suit is away, Cletus is slowly dying in a way. Uh, he's in a lot of pain. So, uh, so the suit like jumps into the sewer, and uh, and it's screaming and screaming. And uh, Cletus goes like Spider-Man's like, what happened? What happened to your suit? He goes, I saw its memories. I saw the suit's memories before it left me. Uh, it knows the Silver Surfer, and this is why I wanted to talk about this story because the Silver Surfer has a history with the symbiotes uh there was a planet you know the backstory of silver surfer he serves galactus he was his he was a guy named norin rad he was on his planet he had a wife he had a loved one he had friends and family and he wanted to spare his planet so he made a deal with galactus if you make me the silver surfer and one of your heralds i will go find worlds for you to kill if you spare mine and Galactus made this deal with him. So uh so that's how he became the Silver Surfer. And he went to other worlds and helped, you know, them be conquered and eaten and devoured by Galactus. So one of those worlds was actually a world where the symbiotes took over because they were on their planet Clintar, but they did go out and invade other worlds, uh, as we saw in Planet of the Symbiotes, and they would attach themselves to li living beings drain them of all their fluids, and then move on to the next beings. And so they took over an entire planet, and Silver Surfer showed up and picked that world to be destroyed. And he saw it, and he was like, well, they're all taken over by these alien creatures anyway. So, boom, Galactus eat this planet. And Galactus ate an entire planet full of symbiotes, uh, which is insane. <laughs> uh, just shows you the power of Galactus. And, uh, and so the symbiote knew, like the few surviving symbiotes of that invasion and from that you know that planet being wiped out they pass that genetic memory on to all of the other symbiotes uh, that survived and that were on Clintar and that you know weren't part of that invasion so the Clintars and the symbiotes know about Galactus and they're afraid of him and they know about his heralds and they're afraid of them so the symbiotes and Carnage's symbiote in particular had the memories passed down from Venom and, and Venom's father and so on and so on uh, and that lineage and he knew so who Silver Surfer was the moment he saw him so he's running so Silver Surfer goes down into the sewer to chase him and then the symbiote springs a trap and attaches to Silver Surfer and it's like look I can't beat this guy he's a herald of galactus he's powerful so i'm going to try to you know bond with him and take him over and then use that power to do whatever i want because i'm carnage uh and so now you have a carnage that is on the so, so he becomes co a carnage cosmic which i kind of wish he was the crimson surfer that would have been a cooler name but, you know, Carnage Cosmic, I guess, is fitting for him. Uh, a lot of ego in that title, I guess. So, uh, so yeah, so then he, uh, you know, is getting ready to tear apart New York, but then Norrin Rad is actually fighting against the symbiote and uses his powers to leave Earth. So for, all, like, almost most of an issue, you know, Silver Surfer's flying into space, and he's trying to share his memories of his side of the story of why he took over that planet and chose that planet and showing his backstory to the symbiote, to the Carnage symbiote. And then Carnage is sharing all of Cletus Cassidy's psychotic memories with Silver Surfer. And there's like this mental tennis match going on up in space while Spider-Man is, uh, you know, dealing with a, a, a dying Cletus Cassidy. And he's kind of like, you know what? I don't care. Like this guy has brought it upon himself. 
Peter is in a very dark place mentally, I guess, at this part of the, the story. I don't remember him being this dark and and, and, uh, and this selfish, but he is in this in these two issues. He's like, you know what? The city's turned against me. Carnage is dying. Uh, Cletus Cassidy's dying. And Silver Surfer probably took the suit out in space to destroy it. So... I'm just going to stop being Spider-Man. And for like pretty much most of the issue, he's just like, I'm not going to be Spider-Man and I'm not going to deal with the stuff that's, you know, going on. But then he sees this, you know, symbiote coming back on Silver Surfer. And Spider-Man's like, okay, well, I'm calling the Avengers. None of them are answering. They're off on a mission. Fantastic Four, I can't get a hold of them. He even went to find his friend Nate Gray, who is X-Man uh, in the comics. And him and Spider-Man had formed kind of a relationship and friendship during Zero Tolerance and Onslaught and some of those storylines. So he, was, he even went to him and, uh, and he wasn't around. So he's like, so Spider-Man's like, all right, I guess even though the world hates me, I got to save it against a carnage that is attached to Silver Surfer. And so when he shows up, you see that the battle and struggle is still going on. Norrin Rad is using compassion to, to empathize with Cletus Cassidy, to empathize with the symbiote in the race that he helped annihilate. And because he does all this, the symbiote retreats and, uh, and it decides it wants to go back to Cletus Cassidy. So, uh, and, and Spider-Man doesn't want that to happen, but you know, Silver Surfer says, you have to let it happen, dude, because otherwise it's gonna stay attached to me. I can't fight it off forever and it's gonna use my powers to wipe out your planet. So uh, you better just let it go to Cletus Cassidy. That's the lesser of two evils. And Spider-Man is like, God, I hate being me. And, uh, and so they do, and they return it to Cletus Cassidy, and then Silver Surfer uses his powers to solidify Cletus Cassidy as Carnage and completely, like, encase him in, like, this weird metal casing. So he's, like, he's alive, but he's stuck in there forever, which we learn later isn't true, and some writers just forgot that happened, and they just retconned that away, and, like, it never happened. Uh, but for a moment, it looked like the end of Carnage. And Silver Surfer is like, you know, I fought him with compassion. That's how I beat him. But you're right. He can't He can't die. We can't kill him. We can't be responsible for another. I don't want to kill more symbiotes. And I don't want to be responsible for more annihilation of different races. And I can't kill Cletus Cassidy. So we're just going to solidify him in this, you know, you know, like ice chamber, metal chamber thing, and uh, and he's going to be frozen in, in time and space uh, and forever, you know. And like I said, that doesn't stay, stay, you know, the writers don't stick to that, but that's how the story ends. And Silver Surfer goes back into space, um, and Spider-Man goes back to being Spider-Man. And J Joe Robbie Robertson ends up quitting the Daily Bugle after his wife got hurt. He decides he wants to spend time with his family and not focus on work so much, and he was going to go a different path and maybe start working at another company, another paper, or whatever, and he leaves the Daily Bugle. Uh, and he tells Jonah Jameson at this at the end and JJ sitting there thinking about the decisions he made as a, as a person and buddying up with Norman Osborn and knowing it's not the right thing so it causes change in J. Jonah Jameson because he's like well if my best friend who helped me run this paper is leaving something's wrong and I need to you know figure out what it is so it's a lot of emotion a lot of packed in in these two issues for sure i mean i've been talking about it for like 15 minutes now so you guys let me know what you think of this cosmic carnage did you read that story if you haven't pick up carnage classics today it is freaking awesome i definitely recommend it and we are like one or two subscribers away from a thousand so i'm hoping before i make by the time i make my next, uh, next episode it'll be our 1000th episode our 1000 subscriber episode and i promised you guys that i would tell you about my screenplay of spider-man 4 that i wrote back when i was working for sony and this wasn't you know they didn't tell me to write this me and two friends decided to team up to write this and pitch something while they were trying to get spider-man 4 off the ground with sam raimi and we were trying to turn our script in on time which we did but obviously you know it didn't happen the movie never got made and i don't even think our script came close to being picked but i still wanted to share that with you guys and i promised i would if we had a thousand subscribers and we did so if we do before the next episode that will be the next episode so i'll see you guys there thank you so much for watching my show like share subscribe all that fun stuff i'll see you in the future peace